Father Ricardo, <laughs> welcome back to the show. Thank you, Rudy. Thank you for having me back. It's been a while. How long has it been since you were on? Has I it been think two years? Maybe two years and a half. Two, maybe, something yeah, like right, that. two and a half years. Yeah, so it's been a, a while. A lot has happened to you yeah. since then. <laughs> <laughs> You've had quite an adventure. I know. You know, I've gained weight. I've lost it. I've gained again. <laughs> it's just, yeah, you know, it's fun. It's been fun. You are still here at St. Bart's. And it's been, how long has this been your assignment now? <laughs> my, uh, I'm living my fourth year. Your fourth year. Yeah, and I'm this living is my fourth year. not common for somebody's first assignment. No, no. I, I, I think I only know maybe like two other priests, you know, that, that have been like four years, five uh -huh. years as vicars. Actually, I know a priest that all his life and, you know, he's in his fifties. He's always been a, a vicar. At a, at a certain parish? Uh, oh, that's true. No, no. Right? Just it's... in general. But uh, in the same parish, yeah, I guess I only know myself. Right? In this four is years. Yeah. Because you we had the pandemic hit. Mm -hmm. that's, that's one right. reason why they didn't move a lot of your class around. Right. Because right. of the pandemic. And then a, a few other things have happened during your stay here. Yeah, well, you know, I guess it's the reality of immigrants. Um, you know, I'm an immigrant. Uh -huh. I, I am still not a permanent resident. Mm, really? Uh, so, yeah, maybe some people didn't know that. But I, I've been here in this country with visas, different visas, you know. Uh, H-1B, you know, when I was teacher, I was a teacher for five years. Uh -huh. um, then uh, when I entered the seminary, I was uh, an F-1 a student visa okay. that was like for seven years. And then when I got ordained a priest, uh, I switched to um, R1, which is the religious worker. Mm. And uh, that's the current one. Uh, but it's going to end next year. Um, but in 2022, I tried to apply for my permanent residence, but uh, they're behind. They're behind. Oh, yeah. uh, now they're behind backlog. three years. Wow. But last month, it was four years behind. So, uh, they told me, you know, the, the lawyers told me that every month everything can change. Uh -huh. But uh, it's just, you know, exercising patience. And so if they would move me, uh, that would kind of harm my my status. Mm. Um, okay. But we're always uh, looking for, you know, different solutions with the lawyers. I think uh, the current solution is next year, uh, I think I'm going to have to go back to my H-1B visa that I had when I entered the country, which is a special worker okay. that you can find around. So definitely priests are, yeah. are hard to find, <laughs> you know. So that that would be a, a good uh, reason to apply for that. But anyway, you wow. know. Is, is there any risk of you getting deported? Well, no, 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 no. Okay. No. So it's you don't have risk. to worry about ICE knocking on your door and no. in the rectory. And <laughs> <laughs> so next year, um, you know, I'm done with my R1. Okay. So if I stay, then yes, I would become illegal. Uh -huh. So obviously that's not going to happen. Of course. So I'm going to have to, if I can't switch to H1B, I uh -huh. would have to go away from the country for one year. Oh, and wow. then I would have to reapply for... R1, which, which it'll give me five more years. And who knows how long that application is going to take because oh, of the backlog. I oh, I know. Oh, wow. So hopefully we'll try to avoid that and, uh, you know, just get a, a, another kind of visa. That would be yeah. cool if you had that special worker visa again, because that's, isn't that the one that athletes get and, <laughs> and you know, musicians? Well, like, and, and also bilingual <laughs> teachers, because, you know, apparently they're, they're very difficult mm. to, to get. Uh, that's the kind of visa that I got. I did uh, not realize that that's, that's how complicated it is for, for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, uh, I have learned over the years to just um, trust in the Lord, you mm -hmm. know, uh, in things that I'm definitely not in control at all like the law and, you know, all these things, you know. So just uh, leave it up to God. And But, you know, um, there is something really beautiful about uh, the vocation of the priesthood because, you know, I, that's who I am now, you know. If, if I'm sent back to Mexico or, you know, wherever, you know, the, the, um, the bishop would like me to spend maybe that year, uh, you know, mm -hmm. outside the country— I'm a priest, you know, so I'm just serving God's people. Of yeah. course, as a diocesan, it's my spirituality to be here in the archdiocese. So uh -huh. obviously that would be a cross, but hopefully I, I, I won't have to go there. Uh, I think, you know, the, uh, the lawyers are pretty good and, you know, they're, they will do their, their thing. I mean, so. saving souls there, saving souls here. Yeah, you know, exactly. Not, not exactly. Huge At the end of the day, <laughs> that's kind of like the peace that I have, you know, I'll be a priest everywhere. 
So. Do you think, um, is there any kind of uh, appeal to going back to Mexico and maybe seeing family and friends there? And- I mean, the appeal will always be, you know, be with my mother. Uh, mm. And yes, of course, my siblings there. But um, but no, I think, uh, you know, I mean, I've been here for 15 years, yeah. you know, so, and this is where I received my call and... And like I said, spiritually speaking, a diocesan priest, this is where I belong. You know, it's like saying a Dominican, you know, hey, would you be okay going with the Jesuits for a year? <laughs> <laughs> they, they would be like, uh, yeah. mm, well, you know, it's, so it, that, that would be the same thing. And then the, the bonds that you've built with, the, with your brother priests of here course. who are all throughout the archdiocese. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. But of course, it's always a, an adventure. And like I said, I think that the peace that... You know, my identity would not suffer a bit. Mm-hmm. You know, that would definitely, you know, give me the courage and, you know, um, the strength, you know, to to go to another country for that year. But uh, hopefully that that won't be the case. Now, so. speaking of the lawyers, is that is that a lawyer you had to hire yourself or does the archdiocese have The their archdiocese, own lawyer? you know, uh, there are plenty of international priests here. Uh-huh. So the archdiocese does work with a firm. Uh, okay. They're very good. Uh, they're very good lawyers. So. Hopefully. So it's a it's a, a firm that works with the archdiocese. Yes. That's like, it's like they're retain, on yeah. retainer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think they were associated like uh, with two people and now they they separated. And so we're working with one of those parties. Mm. So that's yeah. good. Mm-hmm. Now, we've been here, like we said earlier, you've been here for four years now. You got the pandemic. That hit. Because yeah. the, the first time we interviewed you was we were kind of on the tail end of that. Yes. And then... The very interesting thing happened was the the departure of of Father Christopher. Mm -hmm. Now he left, and so you were left here alone. (laughs) That's right. How was that? Wow. Um, Yeah, it was definitely a mix of uh, emotions, right? Uh, First of all, it was, um, well, what what exactly is my position now, Mm -hmm. you know? Uh, Because I'm the only priest here. Yes. Um, And so... It, it, it kind of helped me to realize, you know, what a vicar is um, at its essence, you know. Um, like a lot of people, they try to equate uh, pastor, vicar, like being in a company and you're just like the assistant of the CEO or something like that. Uh-huh. And, and and for whatever reason, like people say, uh, think, you know, that, oh, well, you are in a lower position and so... I mean, yes, I am, but it's in the priesthood, it, it, that does, it doesn't work like that because I have the powers, you know, uh, of the ordination just yes. as much as a pastor. There's, uh-huh. there's pretty much nothing, you know, that the vicar uh, can't do that a pastor can. I mean, it's, it's yes. basically everything. And so, um, and so with that being said, you know, it's, it's, it's just more like um, um, being – faithful to the identity of a father, a spiritual father to the people who are needing, you know, a leader in, in times of need. Um, but of course, you know, it, it's always like kind of like the human aspect of, okay, where, uh, what am I going to do? Like, is, do I have a special title for those months or, you know, uh-huh. am I, okay, I'm a vicar, but a vicar of, you know, where, where is actually <laughs> yeah. the pastor, you know? Uh-huh. So, uh, yeah, it was, um, it was, so it, there was a little bit of a crisis of, of, uh, of role, you know, like what am I really supposed to do? Mm-hmm. But then, you know, after, you know, maybe the, the first four weeks or so, you know, I said, well, I'm just going to continue to, to do what I have been doing, mm-hmm. you know, I don't need, you know. Uh, the cardinal to call me and say like, well, you are going to become the pastor for Uh seven months or I think it was almost eight months or something like that. Uh, No, you know, I don't need that. I know exactly what to do. Celebrate the sacraments, right? Feed the people with the word of God Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, just just go with each department and make myself available and uh, yeah, you know, Go, go in the middle of the night if they call me, you know, for an anointing. And uh, so I think, uh, but I know a lot of people were praying for me. Oh, and yes. I, and I, you know, oh, yeah. mystically speaking, I, I did feel the the support from above, you know. Because it's, it's like all of the responsibilities and yeah. everything that two people have yes. now just rest on your shoulders. Exactly, exactly. 
Um, and so it was, um, it was fun. Uh, one of the things that I loved about, you know, those, those months was that I was able to celebrate the Tridum. And you know, the Tridum is only for the pastor. Yes. Right? And I think there are some specific um, uh, instances that he could delegate it to, to me, uh-huh. uh, like this one, you know, like he's, he's not here. So Special he's circumstances, yeah. yes. And so that was amazing because, um, I mean, I guess that's, that's pretty much the, if I can say like the dream of a pastor, you know, to be able to, to bring back, you know, or to bring some, some uh, faithful to, to the Catholic church. And, you know, in that vigil, which is, you know, the mother of all the masses. You oh, know, yeah. That's another nickname for, for that special mass, uh, the vigil of, of Easter. And, uh, and so to be able to be, uh, you know, meeting with all the acolytes, with all the people involved mm. and training them, going through the notes, you know, yes. the missile, the rubrics. And then also, you know, it's like, uh, uh, Father, what would you like? You know, this or that? And I'm like, wow, I get to choose now. That's like, that's awesome. You know, <laughs> you, you, you're the one who makes those yeah, decisions. But then and, at the same time, it's like, wow, you know, like now it's a big responsibility. But praise God, everything went so smooth. I mean, we have a beautiful staff here and, and, and a body of volunteers in this oh, parish at St. Yes. Bartholomew that, I mean, it's it was impressive. I mean, everybody did what they had to do. They were excited about, um, you know, that, you know, it was my first time because I guess I communicated that excitement to them. And so everybody <laughs> was like um, having a blast. And so that that's probably one of the most beautiful things that I was able to do. I think as a volunteer, it would be also very exciting. Oh, this is Father's first kid. <laughs> yes. You know, this is, a, we're going to be able to do this right. with him. We'll be part of that, you know, that special memory. Yeah, and even uh, for the newly baptized, you know, they knew that it was my first time doing that. And wow, so it was, wow. it, it became special. Yeah. And it, it, it was, for now, sure. Speaking of you being very busy, mm-hmm. being alone as the only priest right. here at the parish, one thing I heard is that St. Bart's, since... The parish is very close to a hospital. <laughs> you get a lot of calls. Oh yeah, to go to the hospital. Oh yeah, yeah. It's it's interesting that you bring this topic because two days ago I broke the record. My 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 record um, was um, uh, seven anoint seven emergency calls a day, and that happened when I was alone. Wow. And uh, but two days ago I did eight. Eight. And that's that's a lot. So are you there the whole day, or you, you went back and oh, forth? Oh, back each and time? forth. Wow. And that's and that's why you know it's uh, it's pretty. Um, what what do I say? It's a challenge because you do have to leave everything. I mean, except mass, of course, you know. But uh, other than mass, you just have to cancel your appointments and uh-huh. reschedule them and. Uh, any meetings or even lunch, you know, like forget about lunch, forget uh-huh. about dinner, whatever you were going to do. Um, so, yes, you just have to drop everything and go. And so it was eight. Eight. Um, so that was, that's, I mean, if if another priest was here, he would be like, what? Because some <laughs> some parishes don't even get uh, sick calls uh-huh. uh, or they probably get once a month or Something yeah. like that, but, but yes. because of the proximity to well, yes, it's the proximity, uh, proximity, and also because one of the hospitals, for example, is not ours, but we still go because I mean the person is dying needs the uh-huh. last rites. We're not going to be like, uh, well, you know, the uh, that pastor there needs to go. I mean, if it's an emergency, we just go. Yeah, and that's the case with us. There's, there's one that is twenty, twenty one, twenty two minutes away from here, so a little far, uh-huh. but. Um, but we go, they, I guess, you know, they, they have learned that if they call St. Bart's, we'll go. And so I think uh, that, that shows because we, we always get like Father Miguel, the pastor last night, you know, 11 p.m. He had to go. Um, That's a and, nice reputation to have. Yes. Like yes. When, we, when we need a priest, right. we call St. Bart's. Correct. Wow. So it's, uh, and, and it's also part of, again, that identity of who I am, you know, uh, of course, you know, humanly speaking, you're like, oh my goodness, you know, I have to, and then reschedule this. And, but then you're like, no, this, after you, you know, after you go, mm-hmm. uh, you're like, that's why I was ordained. You know, mm-hmm. this, this, this actually gives me joy 
It mm-hmm. does give me life because it's in accordance with my identity of uh, of a spiritual father, a priest. Sometimes uh, saving it's a, souls, a know, reality check, about. right? Yeah. yeah, just so this is it. Yeah, does it does it take its toll on you when you have to do that many anointing of the sick to see that many people in one day who are who are suffering? Yes, yes, for sure. I mean, it's uh, yeah, and it feels in the body for sure. You know, like, for example, after those eight anointings, I was going to go to the gym at 6 a.m. the next day. I woke up, but I'm like, I, I'm not ready. So I had to go back, you know, and sleep one more hour because you just, your body, your body, you know, resents that. Um, now, spiritually speaking, uh, no. I, I guess it's the opposite in the spiritual life. That actually enriches your spirit. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it, it enhances your participation in in the in the ministry of Christ, uh, the healing ministry, and and then you know you you bring it to the liturgy to the mass and and you celebrate mass now you know for these people that you just went you know you have a face you have a name, and so no that enriches it but the body does does resent it yeah of course oh, of course yeah yeah because you've got all that driving and everything to do and then yeah yes for sure do, do you drive yourself each time or oh do yeah. You, is, yeah, yeah. Is there a ministry where there could be a volunteer on standby, perhaps, <laughs> so that way they can just drop you off? You don't have to worry about parking the car. That's true. No, well, uh, in the hospital, you just have you, you can park in the curb, literally, and and you just go. Okay. Uh, so it's very easy. It's not that big of an issue right, for you, right? Wow. Yeah. No, and, and it's it's um, I, I think it, it it's the the aspect of you know. A father, you know that it's that it's doing all this, you know, for for his spiritual children. So um, I I think it's 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 just part of the adventure, you know, uh, uh, to be able to manage your time, you know, and then you know then eat a little bit on the way, uh-huh. and then you know it's uh, and then you know pray a rosary on the way. I mean, it's uh, it, it's it, it's a connection, a mystical connection with with our Lord. As you are doing all these things, mm-hmm. and that, and being alone doing that, uh, it creates the space uh, to to be united with Christ. Uh, especially because many times, you know, you have the Blessed Sacrament with you, and so you know, you you don't turn on the radio or anything like that. Not even a podcast, nothing. You uh-huh. know, just quiet because you know, you know the the real presence is there. Yes, and so uh, you just you know begin to converse with our Lord. And I don't know if that would happen if there was another person there, like a volunteer. Ah, it just would cre- it yes. would be, still be beautiful, yes. but it would create a different environment. Yes. So there's there's something about just being by yourself with Christ, doing all these things. Mm. Yeah, you could let God speak to you yes, in that moment for sure. Wow. But I've never tried it. Maybe I should, and then I, I won't go back to being <laughs> and do this alone. Maybe I would like it. <laughs> Who knows? But this this last time, this the the eight times two days ago, it must have been a little bit easier because you've got Father Miguel here to kind of you know you can kind of shoot things back and forth. Well, we him. have some days that we you know mm-hmm. one day he he's he's, he's on call, uh-huh. other days I'm 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 the one. Mm-hmm. So it just happened that way. Wow. Um, and and the thing is, you know, obviously, like if, if for example, I'm celebrating Mass, uh-huh. uh, I don't even need to, I mean, th- the other priest, in this case, you know, my pastor, he knows. He knows that I'm celebrating Mass, so yeah. he just goes, you know. Mm, yes. Yeah. Or the opposite, you know, I just go if I know, like, he's in downtown, for example, in a meeting or whatever. Yeah. Um, I just go, even though it's not my day. Now, if we can't go, then praise God for other priests that have helped us. Uh, like the heralds of the gospel, Father Joaquim, uh, he's he's been wonderful to us, uh, especially those seven to eight months that I was by myself. Yes, Th- those priests, Father Hoff, uh, yes, uh, many other priests. You know, they 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 always help us, even for confessions, because also Saint Bartholomew, we're uh, we're we're known uh, for our uh, availability for confessions, and so we always need more priests because. Uh, you know, Tuesdays and, and, and Thursdays, it's like between 70 and 85 people. And that would only yeah. for one hour. 
That's, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. a challenge. And so praise God for those visiting priests that they help us. So you had a lot of guest priests come in, I, I assume, during that seven, eight, eight months, you know, to help oh, also yes. with the masses. Oh, yes. So that must sure. have been nice having a lot yes. of guests come. Oh, yeah. Some, yeah. you know, if your brother priests that yeah. you haven't seen in a I while. I remember sending an email, like a particular special email. Uh, telling them about the situation, uh-huh. and I and I said, I, I'm, you know, you always support us. You know, you've been some of you, you know, for the last maybe four years, five years, but I'm just asking for a little extra help uh, and availability. Uh, like if, like if you, if you can, like for example, uh, if you can cancel other commitments you have, uh-huh. you know, if you're able to help us, because I mean, I'm by myself, you know. Yeah, that's and um, and so. Yeah, I mean, uh, they all were very, very generous, and uh, what, was, that's why I was able to. When St. Faustina started, mm-hmm. the choir did all of the Masses, and we only had three Masses each weekend, and we were exhausted. Right. I cannot imagine, as a priest, if you had to do every single Mass every weekend. Oh, yeah. That would be Wow. Yes, uh, canon law actually forbids it. Okay, really? Uh, yeah. Is, what's know, the limit? So two and... In two in a day. Two, two a day. Um, Does that well, count Saturday? Actually, two on Sundays okay. and one every on a weekday. However, uh, besides, you know, canon law, of course, canon law allows bishops, you know, to to make some some uh, changes or or uh, adaptations to their diocese. And uh-huh. so, when we get ordained, we get a letter uh, from from the bishop. It's sealed. And it's called pagella, and it, it gives you all the faculties that that you need, that you have, so that you know that oh, I have delegation for this, I have permission for mm-hmm. this, and so right there, uh, our bishop, the Cardinal Dinardo, gives us permission to celebrate two masses on weekdays and maybe three, but it should not be like regularly, mm-hmm. um, and that's because of the shortage of priests, and and we just need to. And the special situation, and, yes. that happened here. Uh, but of course, you know, if if I if I were to to need to celebrate four, maybe five, I mean, I would have to call him, and I'm pretty sure. I mean, I don't know, but he he probably would say yes because I mean, what if you can't find another priest? <laughs> yeah. you know. But who knows? Maybe maybe he would say, well, you know, invite them just to 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 go to another neighboring parish. You know, I don't know, but mm. uh, but yeah. Uh, and yes, it's it's about uh, being tired. Uh, one of the reasons that perhaps that happens, but most important is because we're dealing with sacred things, right? We're dealing with the most sacred, which is the the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist, and we're human beings. So our church, you know, is it's a teacher, but it's also a mother, and so she knows that in our humanity, if we if we repeat things, you know, maybe four masses a day, whatever, uh, we might mess up our psychology and start oh. thinking that this is just, yeah, eh, you know, it'll another, become robotic. Another thing to yeah. do, yeah. And uh, and so the church wants to take care of our spiritual life as well. Yes. And so that's why uh, uh, the the church limits the priest. Uh, the amount of masses that we have to celebrate because it's taking care of our spirituality mm-hmm. uh, and taking care of the sacred as sacred, you know. Yes. Not that, as common use, you know. Yeah, that's, oh, just another mass. Exactly. Just, you know, you don't want, exactly. yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Right. Now, during this seven, eight months, something very interesting happened here at St. Bart's that, I, well, interesting is probably not the best word. Tragic, I would say, as well is something that even made national news was the stealing of the tabernacle. Oh, yeah. That, yeah. there were a lot of us that were praying for St. Bart's yes. at when the tabernacle was stolen. So who, yeah. who discovered it? Um, so, um, well, you know, be, before getting into that story, you know, uh, when I went to World Youth Day uh, uh-huh. a few months ago, uh, I told them where I was from and a random priest was like, oh, didn't they stole the tabernacle from? I'm like, wow, you know this this priest. I forgot. I think Chile or I don't know where. Wow, he was so from. it made world news yeah. as well. Oh, it's, it's wow, crazy. Um, I you know the worst thing that could happen 
it happened. You yeah. Know? And um, now the pastor was already back, right? Father Christopher was back. Okay, so he was on uh, but, sabbatical. Yes, but uh-huh. he he was still not like like full time, you know, uh-huh. in in the parish. So he he was he he came back and he was only celebrating, I think, uh, one mass on Sunday, something like that. But he had already been back. I think it was after after two weeks or so of him being back. Uh-huh. This happened. Wow! Uh, and so, well, praise God because I, I, you know, I didn't have to deal with this just you know with me when I was by myself all yes. those months. Um, but but anyway, so yeah, I remember. Like if it was yesterday, I mean, I uh, I was going to go to a retreat with Father David Michael Moses. Mm-hmm. And so he, I was going to go to the house to St. Faustina. That's when he was. And so, and I, on my way there, Deacon Bill, our deacon here, uh-huh. he calls me. So I'm driving, you know, going to the rectory at St. Faustina to meet Father David Michael Moses uh-huh. and drive to our retreat. Was this morning? I was or gonna evening? leave for uh, morning. Morning, okay. Um, yeah, like seven a.m. Okay. And um, and so Deacon Bill said, "Father, where is the tabernacle?" I'm like, "What do you mean, Deacon? In the church, you know? Uh-huh. Uh huh. It's not in the. It's not in the church." And I'm like, "What?" I said, "Well, let me let me go back immediately." Uh-huh. So I. Um, Come back and, you know, I called Father Stephen Michaels like, hey, come to St. Bartholomew. I said, I think they stole the tabernacle. So I go, I open the door of the church and emptiness. And I, I, I mean, I was about to cry. I mean, I was just, what's going on? And uh, I go to all the possible places that immediately, you know, I said, well, you know, if, if this was vandalism, then probably let's go to the trash cans. Yeah. And I go to, I went to all of them, the dumpster, every, everywhere. Uh-huh. And it was not there. And so um, then, you know, Father Christopher comes and uh, we had already called the police. So we were just waiting for the police. So uh-huh. we, we uh, gave them our statements and uh, and I and I told Father Dave Michael, I don't think we're gonna go to the retreat. I mean, I and Fa- and Father Christopher says like, no, 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 like praise God, like I'm back. So please just go to retreat, pray. I, he he goes pray. Now you have another uh, reason to go to that retreat. Yes. you know, because yeah, I mean, pray pray for the whole parish that we may be able to find and and yeah, but you know, it was uh, kind of. Uh, I mean, it was a good retreat, but I, I was just like constantly, you know, like calling people, you know, because I, I mean, people were calling me too. Yeah. And so it was, it was just uh, the first three days I was just like not having it. I was about, I, I actually wanted to come back. Uh huh. But um, so long story short, uh, yes, they, they, they got the guy and apparently what, what uh, he had been doing, he was a young guy. And and that's what he did. He he would steal gold from like different places, uh-huh. churches, and uh, and it happened that one of our doors did not close properly, and I think he was in drugs, and he was just like playing around, like let's see if this door is open, whatever, oh. and it was open, and he goes and and the tabernacle was not bolted down. Now there's a reason because of that. Um, when Father Christopher came, um, no, before Father Christopher came to this parish, there was uh, a transition from the previous pastor to him uh, with Father Nicholas. He was the the, the vicar mm-hmm. here, but there was no pastor, so he he kind of did the same thing, you know, like me by myself, but uh-huh. uh, less less time, and. Um, and so when he came, the people said, oh, uh, last week the tabernacle went back to the, to the little room behind the crucifix. So just kind of like, uh, kind of apart, right? Okay. And people were, were angry about that. They didn't want the tabernacle to be moved, you know, where, where it is behind the altar. Okay. But it was moved. And so the vicar is like, well, I, I, I don't think I can you know, just override 
what has been decided. Yeah. Because I think it was a committee or something like that. Uh huh. So long story short, you know, the pa- pastor, uh, uh, Father Christopher Plant comes and the same thing. It's like, well, I, uh, they did that and let's just leave it there, you know. And so uh, when I when I came to the parish, there were already conversations to bring the tabernacle back to behind the altar. Uh-huh. Uh, during the pandemic, we did that, especially because we were live streaming the masses and we wanted people to, to see, see the, the tab- tabernacle. Yeah. And so um, – uh, Father Christopher was like, um, somebody told me that somebody had built a special stand for it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we called maintenance and maintenance said like, no, I think by mistake, somebody, we donated it. Okay. And so uh, Father Christopher was like, well, then what, what can we do, you know, for right now? Yeah, temporarily. So we just, yeah. we just, we found a pillar and we just place it and we place a tabernacle there. And we were going to build a special one, Mm -hmm. but you know how it is. I mean, it just time and then the pandemic and all these things. Yeah. The craziness uh, of that year. Yeah. uh, Yeah. And so, and then he left, Mm. right? Sabbatical. And And you couldn't make that decision. Well, yes. And so, uh, to long story short, you know, it was not bolted down Uh and it was so easy for, for this guy to, to just take it. Wow. Um, was he so he was after the gold, not the consecrated yes, Eucharist? Correct. Yeah, but but uh, but we couldn't. Uh, we I think the story is that the police, somebody received a call from someone that they saw the tabernacle by a Burger King. I heard that. Yeah. Yes, and there were pictures like by there a dumpster by a yes, Burger King, uh-huh. right? Yeah. And so by the time the police got to the scene. To retrieve it, uh-huh. it was gone. Again. So the person didn't stay there. The one who took the picture. No, no. Oh wow! Didn't. Um, I think uh, she needed to pick up her grandchildren uh-huh. from school, and and she stayed there for a while. But the police oh, it took took a uh, while to a get while. there. Yeah. So anyway, it was stolen oh. twice. It was stolen stolen twice, and um, did so was nothing the, was recovered. Was the Eucharist in there when she saw it, or she did not touch it? No, she did not even get, uh, get near because okay. in a way she, she knew that this made the news and and she yeah. got a little bit um, scared about just uh, doing that. But, yeah, and who knows if the person who stole it is somewhere nearby right. and might do something to her if she... Right, exactly. Yeah. But long story short, um, we didn't recover wow. nothing. Wow. So even though they caught the person. Right. Wow. Yeah, because he was stolen again. Uh huh. And wow, it is. I guess there's a lot of impotence, you know, when you don't know exactly what happened. Yeah. Um, and there was and, a know, lot of anger. And in at the, the end of the day, yes, you yeah. know, we cared for the tabernacle yeah. uh, because also it was, you know, it's blessed and and it's very important. But we were all, all uh, obviously more interested in in, in the, our Lord, yes, in the Eucharist, and so. We couldn't, we couldn't find nothing. So wow. yeah, it was, it was very sad. Uh, we, I, I personally, I struggled with a lot of anger mm-hmm, when mm-hmm. I heard about that. Oh yeah, it's uh, and I'm sure you know a lot oh, of yes. the people in the community. You've had to con- yeah. you know, talk oh, to yeah. them about constantly. A lot of emails, a lot of phone calls, a lot of people coming into my office, and you know, and yeah, I was just suffering with them too. I was, you know. Wow, but at the same time, you know, just uh, trying to to lead them to to peace. Um, but yeah, I mean, we did a, a holy hour of reparation. Um, we we did a Eucharistic procession, and so we we did some things that helped all of us, uh, you know, to to make a, a reparation for for all those things that that they did, which is stealing. Mm-hmm. You know, going into the sanctuary and, you know, God knows in what state, you know, this person. Yeah. You know, so, and the, and, and the most difficult thing, right, to, to pray also for them, to yes. pray for our enemies, you know. Well, that's one of the things I saw online, you know, because I saw some news articles and then I saw the comments and some, a lot of, a lot of Catholics were angry. And one, I saw one comment that really made me think and said, hopefully 
their proximity to our Lord will mm. somehow touch their heart. Right. I said, yes. okay, we'll pray for mm -hmm. for the, the, the criminal who did this. Yeah, I remember around that time, you know, I learned, you know, I, I was reading so much about, um, well, the Eucharist and, and, and things, you know, maybe Thomas Aquinas would say or some saints. And, um, and you know, I, I don't think Thomas Aquinas said this, but uh, I found that, you know, Sometimes when those things happen, uh, Jesus, you know, in his desire, you know, he he stops being uh, real present there. So mm. he himself uh, removes uh, his substance from from the Eucharist. I mean, from the from the bread. That's comforting so, to know. Yeah. Um, so the the miracle of transubstantiation, right? It's it's the change of substance, but the accidents remain. Uh, and so somehow, you know, miraculously, uh, so Jesus, you know, puts back the substance of the bread and he mm -hmm. he leaves. But I mean, th these are things that you know uh, we don't we don't know. We'll only um, know, you know, only, after death, and, and we just have to pray think, that yeah. um, that if the person you know uh, did that, you know, for him to somehow come to an understanding that yes, that he he just committed a desecration yeah. and, and uh, to ask for forgiveness. But, um, but anyway, so yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's something that I think about it. Yeah. Often, but you know, now we, 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 we purchased um, a bigger tabernacle, yes. same design mm -hmm. from Granda, the, from Spain. They have beautiful things and we wanted the same design uh, because um, you know, it's it's just easier, you yes. know, because people is like, nah, we should get this design or that. Uh -huh. So it just it's the same and uh -huh. just bigger, and um, and That's it's exact, bolted down three times bigger, I think, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then a bolted down, bolted okay. down, and the door's fixed. Yes, and, <laughs> yes, <laughs> and and uh, and I noticed and a special stand for it, and I noticed you know? um, the addition of security cameras as well, if I'm not mistaken. Oh yes, yeah. yes. That, so that's that good. Was added. And the alarm system, because mm -hmm. that was another thing. The alarm system w was not working. Oh, wow. So it was just many things that... Just came together. Uh, well, yeah, yeah. everything. Every, we we made it so easy, let's put it that way. Yeah. And so that was definitely our, our definitely our mea culpa. Wow. So, yeah, the, I mean, it's, uh, there's no other way to put it, you know? It was, we... We didn't uh, acted the way we believe, right? If we believe that Jesus is truly his body, his blood, soul, and divinity, well, our actions were not matching our belief. And so that's something to, uh, to always think about, uh, not just in this scenario, but in mm -hmm. any other thing. Yes. You know? Even when you receive Jesus in the Eucharist, how are you receiving it? You know, if someone who doesn't believe in the real presence... If they see you, would they come to believe just by seeing you? Do, would, would they think that you believe that that is Jesus, that that is God, mm -hmm. right? In, 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 in our posture, in our demeanor, um, even the, 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 the clothes you wear for math. I mean, um, everything communicates our belief, right? And so our actions, our external actions should believe our interior uh, believe and so that's that's always something that we need to to think about you know how we are approaching the sacred mysteries how long after that did father miguel come he came he comes uh august okay so that so was that about was six months six months yeah. so later mm -hmm. wow was there any talk about somebody coming in temporarily just for a few months or <laughs> like a substitute no, teacher of sorts, you know? <laughs> no, there uh, there was a pastor from another parish that was kind of helping us like in the administrative things, uh -huh. you know. Okay. Uh, but he was more like, uh, if you need me, you know, call me. Um, there were some specific things, you know, that the archdiocese wanted to, to communicate to like the bookkeeper and that was through this pastor. And mm -hmm. um, But no, there was no communication about like, uh, or rumor, so to speak, uh, of, you know, what's happening, uh, who's going to, no, it was just, uh, I was just patiently waiting. It's like, okay, well, 
someday, you know, a, a pastor will, <laughs> will come, you know, someday, someday. And, uh, were there any crazy rumors about the d- departure of, uh, Father Christopher? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I mean, you know how it is, you know, when, when, when you don't reveal something that it's true, then people make their own truths, you know? Okay. And they start, you know, uh, finding reasons. I think that's very human of us to find the cause, right? To find the reason, like what is happening, right? Because, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. It's and, the nature of gossip. Yeah. you know, obviously they would say, well, Father Rick certainly should know what's going on and when is the new pastor. I'm like, no, I, I don't know. I... Like I told you before, I am suffering with you uh-huh. and I am leading you to peace, just like I am finding peace, you know, in my own prayer uh-huh. and just patience, you know. But, uh, and so because they didn't find, you know, exactly the causes and then they start talking, you know. And so I think, uh, like they start saying like, oh, you know, Father Christopher was punished because, um, you know, he, he was doing all this liturgical renewal and, you know, uh, allowing, you know, the traditional Latin mass to sell. No, I mean, remember, <laughs> this was before the new thing about Pope Francis and Tradiciones Custodes. That was way before that. Way and before that. Yeah, so. <laughs> so, I mean, it was, no, uh, it was none of that. Uh-huh. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I think that the fact, you know, that, you know, Father Christopher is, it's, uh, it's, it's, where is he? He's uh, in Saint Vincent de Paul. Saint Vincent de Paul. Yes. Yeah, yeah that's right. Because he he went to another parish for a few months, but then he he went back to Saint Vincent de Paul. And you know he's there. You can go ask you him. You can ask you know? him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. Wow. So crazy stories. People just coming up with their right. own wild theories. Correct. Correct. And wow. um, and you know, but at the same time, that that also um, helps people to realize that. You know, they do need to pray for us, for for, for their priests, mm-hmm. just like we pray for, for the laity and their holiness. Um, they they should also pray for us and, and our safety and 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 our holiness as well. So how long of a lead time did you have before, you know, from when you found out Father Miguel was coming till when he actually came? How much preparation time did he have? Oh, um I think it was Three weeks. So three weeks from his previous assignment, he had to wrap everything up within three weeks before coming here. Yeah, I think it was three weeks, if I'm not mistaken. That doesn't seem like a lot of time (laughs) to wrap things up. No, and I I think he was going to be here earlier, but uh, something happened or something. I think it it was like three weeks. Wow. And yeah, so yeah, it was... uh, you know, even even for us, right? You know, to to have everything ready, but uh, you know, for for Father Christopher, you know, to to move uh-huh. and you know get all the stuff uh, together, and I mean, yeah, it's it's it, it, that's how it is. You know, you just have to leave. It's the nature of your yeah. your life as a priest. Yeah. I remember in seminary, you know, because we we kind of experience a little bit of that uh, moving from one room to another room or to a building to another building uh-huh. every year. And uh, and I rem- we would criticize for <laughs> Father David Michael Moses for having almost nothing <laughs> in his room. <laughs> Literally, it was just a little cross. Uh huh. And it's like, hey, you don't read. I don't see any books in your room. I only see your guitar, your your bed, and a little crucifix, and of course his his computer to edit all these um, uh-huh. videos. But. Uh, we would criticize him, but every, at the end of each year, while we were struggling with <laughs> carrying all our books and all of our art, you know, and, uh-huh. and he, he, he was like, what's up guys? Like, I'm done. You know, yes, of course. In three seconds, literally. You moved all your stuff, yeah. just your clothes and. <laughs> right. And I assume you don't have a whole lot of clothes because you, do you have a uniform in the seminary, right? Or. Yeah. I mean, polo shirts. And yeah. So it's not slacks. a whole lot of. Right. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, you know, that, that was kind of like a, a, a lesson, right? Because, yeah, I mean, it's, it happens the same thing. You know, you can move at any time to another parish. If you have a bunch of things, man, that, that's, you're going to require an army to help you, you know, boxing everything. Mm-hmm. But, but if you just uh, live what, what the Lord and, and, uh, and are 
our promises say to live a simple life, then it works. The problem with me is that I do like art and I do like books. And so those are heavy stuff. <laughs> and so, yeah. You have a lot of stuff. And, you know, when I got ordained, uh, people were like, oh, we want to give you something. What do you want? And I always said any, anything about anything for the mass, vestments. Mm. I, th I said, if you're going to, you know, give me something, I don't want a watch. I don't have a watch. I don't want this. I don't, vestments, any, you any, can't go any wrong kind of, with that. yeah. And, um, and so I do have uh, quite a few vestments. Mm -hmm. And so that's probably going to be difficult when I, when I move to another parish. The vestments, some little statues that I have, and uh, and books. And the books. Yeah. So if you want to help me, Rudy, <laughs> um, you know, maybe I can just... I don't have a big truck, I, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> now, the death of Father Ryan Stowies, he was in your class. Yes. That must have been very difficult. Oh, yeah. 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 I, um, there was uh, the last... Two years uh, before we got ordained, uh, there was a, a, a group of three of us. And, you know, Ryan was the one who, Father Ryan was the one who, who gathered us. And so, yeah, I got to know him very, very well, a uh, very holy man. And, uh, yeah, he, he shared with us, you know, that the cancer had come back. And uh, so, yeah, we, uh, we were suffering with him. And then... But at the same time, and he he was, um, I think it was almost two years after after he got ordained. Mm -hmm. And but those two years, I mean, he gave himself hundred and ten percent. Oh yeah. And uh, you know, I I remember you know the, those those conversations that we would go for dinner. Uh, I just feel so enriched by what he was sharing, and you know, I invited him to be. Uh, the deacon at a solemn high mass here at St. Bartholomew. Because mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you know this, but we, I am still a deacon. Even yes. though I'm a priest, I'm still a deacon. Yes. And so in the solemn high mass, you, you can function as a deacon in the mass. Okay. And so uh, it's, it's that mass, I don't know if you have seen pictures, you know, it's the priest, the deacon, and the subdeacon. Okay. Uh, which can be an acolyte. And, uh, and it's a beautiful mass, uh, very elaborate. Um, and so, you know, because Father Ryan celebrated the traditional Latin mass at Prince of Peace. Uh -huh. And so I, I told him, hey, um, uh, I just consecrate to St. Joseph and the solemnity is coming. And I really want to, to have a solemn high mass. And he right away said, I'll be your deacon. And so, yeah, he came and... Uh, even though you could see he was tired, but he, he, he did it. He did it with, with so much uh, grace and, and fervor and devotion. And we, we ha I have a lot of pictures of that mass. So it's, uh, it was a beautiful experience to, to be with him. We yeah. wanted to get him his story on, on our show, uh -huh. but he was so busy serving his people mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. in a way, we're like, okay, we're glad that he's doing that. But at yes. the same time, we wanted oh, to get yeah. his story. But we're glad that they've got a movie mm -hmm. coming out, the documentary about yes, his story. That's so right. that's going to be great. Yeah, but you you would have found uh, a person that is transparent, inside out, uh, um, not a complicated person, extremely simple. Um, yeah, very... Um, and and I think you know that's that's how the saints are. You know, they're to the world they're very ordinary, but they have an extraordinary spiritual life. And um, it and it's it's the paradox that that we hear in the gospels. You know, like uh, speaking of Saint Joseph, right? Saint Joseph, he was poor. Uh, he was really like nobody for the world, but. We know who he is. Mm -hmm. He was a descendant of the King David. Right? Yeah. That, that's who he is. Mm -hmm. Or even like the mystery of the Eucharist. It looks like bread. Yeah. Ordinary bread and Ordinary wine. bread, yeah. But <laughs> God Almighty, you know, his body's blood, soul, and divinity. 
Um, yeah, it's filled with paradoxes. And I think the saint is, it's, uh, it's a paradox. And I think uh, Father Ryan was a paradox as well. We were blessed to have him at St. Faustina when he was a deacon. So that, that was a yes. wonderful experience. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget going on, a, we went on one of the confirmation retreats together with him. It was, I've got a lot of memories from yeah. that one. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Father Miguel comes and mm -hmm. you finally have relief. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes and no, because um, let's put it this way. Every transition requires a lot from you. Um, because it's, it's different, right? I and mean, any change, oh, yeah. um, you know, you, you, even though like, uh, he is from Guadalajara, just like me, we're uh -huh. from the same town. Um, we're very different in many, many, many ways, you know? And so what unites us honestly is the priesthood. Um, and so obviously, well, that's, that's beautiful and that's very powerful. And so, um, uh, to, to be able to recognize ourselves immediately as brothers, right, as brother priests, then uh, that that helps for then the personality to match that brotherhood objectively that we have mm. uh, by virtue of our ordination. Uh, but of course, you know, uh, uh, I think we we started a little rough uh, the first months uh -huh. um, because of differences of opinions, and of course, you know. Uh, I, you know, he's a pastor and then, you know, in, in decisions, you know, it's like the pastor said it and, and mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm very much like that. Um, I'm not going to be in a debate when I know who has the authority, you know? yeah. but in, but in sharing our ideas uh, and thoughts and, and stuff like that, that, that's when, you know, the differences of personalities are revealed. And so... But just like any human, you know, relationship, yeah. you know, you have to work through those differences. And, uh, and yeah, I think, you know, I would say now it's, it's been a year with mm -hmm. him here. And I think we, we have found uh, very interesting ways to, to work together. And I guess it shows with, with all the things that, that, that we have, you know, we're going to have a Eucharistic conference coming up mm, in November. Yes. Uh, I don't know when this video is going to be released, but it's <laughs> November 25th. Um, and then also, uh, I think uh, we're going to have a mass in Portuguese mm, uh, for that's interesting. October 12th for Our Lady of Aparecida, the wow. patroness of Brazil. Uh -huh. And um, and so I guess we, we have found uh, ways to, to, to work together and, you know, to... Uh, to say like, you know, I have this, this idea, you know, go for it. So uh -huh. I think he has developed a lot of trust in, 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 you know, in the projects that I, that I communicate. Uh, maybe I think he sees my excitement and that kind of convinces him. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get excited about uh, certain things and, and I'm not shy, you know, I really show my uh -huh. excitement and, uh, yeah, maybe maybe it's my marketing background, you know, <laughs> that I'm like, uh, maybe I'm convincing just by being ex excited. But uh, but yeah, it, it has been a, an interesting. I've met his some of his brothers that he they have come from Guadalajara. Mm. They have stayed in the rectory, and so a uh, beautiful family. He has amazing brothers, and um, so yeah, it's it's uh, it's 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 going well now. But. All this to say, you know, that, you know, some people say it's like, well, you know, you're, you're a priest and you're automatically holy and you're going to get along no matter what. No, no. <laughs> we, we also need to work through our, our different personalities and, and yes, a lot of prayer and, uh, but also, you know, that, that courage to, to change certain mm -hmm. uh, ways, you know, of receiving the information and giving it communication uh, after all. Because they always say that, you know, you may be best friends with somebody, but living with them right. is very different. Well, yeah, I'm glad you point that out because it's not like, uh, like it's like, okay, well, I don't like you. I'm not going to see you in a month, you know? I mean, it's like every day, every single day. And it's not just like office work, right? It's in the rectory as well. Uh, but uh, But like I said at the very beginning, you know, it's, it's it's the the objective aspect of our brotherhood and the priesthood that if you if you allow that to carry 
you know, everything else, mm. um, then, you know, you are able to work through those differences. You've got a common goal. Well, because at the end of the yeah. day, we don't want to be fake. If we call each other brothers mm. or just like in, at mass, brothers and sisters. Okay. If we say that, then we better live as brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. you know, otherwise it just becomes a show. Mm -hmm. And, and going back to about the Eucharist, you know, uh, we have to have our, our deeds match our beliefs. And so if we really believe we're brothers, then our deeds better match that. So it's good that you guys have found a way to, yes. you know, to, oh, yeah, to reconcile yeah. your differences. Yeah. It's so interesting. And he's fun and fun and funny, <laughs> you know. And so, uh, yeah, I think there's a lot of humor now in the in the rectory and in Mexican humor, especially. So, is there is there a little bit of a um, some kind of apprehension when you find out somebody new is coming because you don't know how you're going to mesh? You don't know what kind of personality the person. I'm, I think uh, God has given me um, the the um, the gift uh, to be able to relate with everyone. You can um, adapt to yeah. different situations. But uh, I think it, it was more about um, mm, like the, the usual things, you know, like uh, this is what we have been doing for four years uh -huh. and I'm okay changing it, but can we wait a little bit longer? You know, Make gradual changes. Yes. Okay. It, was, it was more, <laughs> it, it was more about those things. Uh, I'm, 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 I mean, if, if it's wrong, right, if, like the tabernacle, mm -hmm. oh, well, let's, let's just wait, you know, no, I mean, if it's something that we, a change has to be made, man, we need to do it now, uh -huh. you know, but if, if it's not bad, then it's better, you know, for the people of God, you know, gives that gradual, time to, yeah, um, adjust, yeah, adjustment, yeah. Do priests have any, um, have any of those small little things like let, let's say if there's a disagreement with the way the toilet paper goes <laughs> under do you have any of those types of things <laughs> no no we don't share toilets no oh. we don't share bathrooms <laughs> maybe in a smaller rectory maybe that that would have to be the case you know if you had more vicars or whatever but no praise god you know uh we we're we're, we're uh, more separated than, okay. than that but uh, physically, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, uh, I, I guess it's, it's, uh, the kitchen, the kitchen uh, is, uh, the common place. And, uh, let's put it this way. I know there are some priests with, um, very specific ways that they want their stuff in to, the kitchen, in the uh -huh. kitchen. Um, me, uh, I, I notice it and I'm like, and then I just do it myself, you know, uh, which probably, you know, the same for him. You know, if I, if I leave something, you know, he, he would just do it. Uh -huh. I think both uh, are like that. And so that, that's helping a lot. Okay. Uh, we just bear each other's burdens or uh -huh. bear each other's um, mistakes, I guess, uh -huh. or flaws. Yeah, maybe just, yeah, absent-mindedness, you forgot right. something. and yeah. Right, yeah, like, like the cabinet stores. You know, like that's something like I don't like, uh -huh. but I see them every once in a while. Every once in a while, <laughs> or the, the the drawers, you know, open. And I'm like, what what happened here? You know, you know who knows? I, he I might just, have been in a rush and received an course. emergency phone call, and he had yeah. <laughs> you never know. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. I mean, I don't. But it's just it's just you know I just do it and yeah, you know, move on. You know, move on. And I mean, I that's, that's the same when, way with husband and wife. Yeah, at home exactly. Or, you exactly. Know, uh, siblings at home as well. Right. Right. Yeah, because you are brothers. <laughs> Humor is a great medicine. And I think when, when you start just, uh, you know, in a respectful way, just laugh at people's uh, mistakes, then you just just go about, you know, your business and just do what you have to do. Close that door and, mm -hmm. you know, get your stuff and keep going, you know? Yes. Now, just recently... You, you've had a wonderful experience being able to go to World Youth Day yes. with some of the parishioners. I know. Tell us about that. Yeah, no, that was an unbelievable, uh, incredible experience. I 
my I'm I'm just gonna be honest. Um I'm not a huge fan of those big events. Not a huge fan, just uh my, so my the the bar was very low for me. You mm, know? Okay. Um all I knew is that I knew that I was gonna suffer. You know, with the heat, with you <laughs> the know, crowds sleep with the crowd <laughs> sleeping. You know, there in the streets. Uh huh. You know, uh, camping. You know, like all of that. I, you know, I knew that it was going to be a, a challenge for me. Um, but uh, now that I'm back and I experienced that, I can tell you that I am extremely grateful to God that I was able to be there for many reasons. Uh, uh, the main reason is that I was able to witness a healthy, um, normal Catholic youth of the world. You know, there, like my third day there of, of the World Youth Day week, um, I was just, you know, surrounded by 1.5 million of Catholics from around the world. Uh-huh. And, and I just noticed something, you know, uh, like externally, I noticed that they, they look healthy. They look uh, young people who are athletic, that they are, they eat healthy stuff. I don't, I, I don't see any like weird, like covered in tattoos or piercings or, uh-huh. or you know, like every, every night there was a concert. And I and I thought that the next morning I was just gonna see the whole street like filled with bottles or uh-huh. beer or what, no fights, like mm. uh, there was a, a, a genuine joy. Uh, they were just gathering gatherings, uh, you know, throughout the, the the city of Lisbon. You know, praying the rosary. Um, I, it was I was just surrounded by by healthy young young people. And so uh, it kind of made me, you know, feel proud of, of, of our faith and how, how this, this young people are, are living it out, you know. Um, all this to say, of course, you know, they, there's a lot of, uh, of evangelization that has to, to happen, of course. Mm-hmm. But it just, it, it just filled me with, filled with, with hope. Um, I was filled with hope. And I think that's, that's a gift that that I wouldn't have experienced it here. Um, now, another is, uh, well, I, I got to shake the Pope's hand. Really? Yes. Wow. So that was, uh, that was a very, very cool experience. So we were, we were like four hours before the, the welcoming of the Pope. Um, so we were under the heat. It was, I mean, like I said, all those things uh-huh. uh, about suffering, you know, they were there, you know, very challenging. But uh, when we realized that we were going to see the Pope, you know, just driving by, uh-huh. we got excited. And, uh, and so, you know, uh, the level of excitement of, of young people, I, I don't know, you probably know what, what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know, it's just very contagious. Yes. Very, very contagious. And so, you know, finally they say like, the Pope is coming, he's coming, you know. Uh-huh. And so we would just see from... A, long distance that he was indeed coming, you know, just a little white little thing, you know, just coming, <laughs> coming. And, uh, and so obviously they were screaming and yelling and, and uh, so God got excited. And, uh, and then all of a sudden, you know, he passes by and he stops in front of us. Wow. I was like, what is happening? <laughs> so he's, uh, Pope Francis stops for babies to to bless them uh-huh. or for mate which is an argentinian tea or or beverage uh-huh. um i don't know if, have you heard about mate no i have not and so it's a, it's a very interesting uh i think in the argentinian culture it's considered like almost like a holy drink okay uh, even in the pandemic they didn't stop doing this okay so it's basically um a tea that uh, it has a straw, and the straw is metallic. Okay. Or another, yeah, I think it's mo- mostly it's metallic. And and you're just uh, in in an afternoon or any time you're just gathered, you know, with a bunch of people, uh-huh. and you just pass it, and everybody drinks it from the same straw. Okay. And you know nobody's disgusted by it. It's yeah. Just, uh, 
it's like I said, it's kind of like a holy drink. For it, so it's a communal thing. It's a yeah. communal thing. Yeah. But like I said, not even during COVID, they stopped wow. doing that. Uh-huh. So the Pope would stop for that. Yeah. So the Pope would stop for that because it means, you know, uh, community. Aspect. Uh-huh. And so he he stopped and- And he'd he, drink he, tea yes, that somebody else, yes, and he, just a random person. In exactly. The, a random person. And so he just drinks it and gives it back. But, you know, when he was drinking it, I'm like, we're there. Like he's in front of us. Like how how far was he oh, from you? Like where you are. Uh-huh. I mean, extremely close. Uh-huh. And then all the police officers, for whatever reason, they left. Like they opened way for uh-huh. for us. And so I just go immediately close, <laughs> and I just you know uh, stretch my my hand to him, and he looks at me, and he gives me a good handshake. And then he leaves. Oh, he didn't pass you the tea? No. No, <laughs> no that, that was after he, he drank. Okay. Uh, that would have been something, right? Right, yeah. Um, but no, it was, uh, and then, you know, I, I looked at the, you know, the 25 young adults that I that I went with, and they were all crying and super oh. uh, touched by that experience. Yeah. And because uh, one, of, one of our uh, young adults, uh, Juan, he, he also got to shake the, the wow. Pope's hand. And so he was crying. He, wow. You know, it's it's like he was like, I can't believe it, I can't believe it, <laughs> and I and I said, hey, maybe God is trying to tell you something, and he's like, you know, Father, I thought that maybe you know this trip was going to help me to see if if I'm called to the priesthood, mm-hmm. and so this experience is definitely helping me. Uh, either like he's like, I'm getting close to know if the Lord is calling me or not. Uh, I don't know now what what he thinks, but uh, but that it was very very powerful for for him and and for me as well. Um, it just you know uh, I I felt extremely uh, small uh, before the Pope, you know, because I I recognize who he is, uh, the Vicar of Christ. Yeah, and the uh, the lineage from yes. Saint Peter and Jesus, right. the, the whole thing. Yes. Yeah, wow. And, and as the as the Vicar of Christ, you know, it's it's is that aspect of wow, like Jesus, you know, among us, he wants to be with his people, and that's why he instituted the papacy, you know, um, to lead us, you know, to not leave us uh, without a without a shepherd, you know, mm-hmm. without himself, you know, in in the in the Pope, so it's um, yeah, it's it, I I will always cherish that that experience. And a lesson that a lot of people should take from this, and this is just a joke, is get that Argentinian drink. <laughs> so if you're in a million among millions of people, and he drives by, if he sees yes. that drink, he yes. <laughs> Or get your nephew or your grandchildren, <laughs> grandchild. Also, you and, double your chances. Get a baby yeah, and go. the drink. There you go. Or better, get the baby with the with drink. The drink. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Wow. Yeah. Now, I I spoke with Father Christopher Meyer. He said that the two of you almost didn't see each other, but somehow it happened that yes. you were able to oh, see that, each other That's there. hilarious, too. So, you know, being there, uh, you always struggle with the batteries of your phone. And so you constantly need to turn it off because you you need to save. You still have six more hours uh-huh. in, in, during the day. Um, and you need the GPS constantly and whatnot. So uh, I checked my phone and I received a text from him saying like, I'm about to turn off my phone, but if you come to mass where all the priests are, I'm in, I'm on uh, le- the left side. Uh-huh. of the the stage that was it and then i reply but he he, he had turned he, his phone yeah. off yeah and i'm like oh. and so i when i go to that event I, we were a little bit late um but i told the group hey so the priest you know we're supposed to be all the way you know n- n- there uh-huh. um so i started walking but i don't know if, have you ever been to an event with a million people. <laughs> no. I mean, it, it's, oh, man, it's, you, I, I didn't think that I was going to be able to walk. I mean, there were people sitting on, on the, in the grass, uh-huh. uh, walls of people. It's like, how am I going to go through all this mass of people all the way to, to concelebrate, you know, uh-huh. the mass? 
Because I mean, so, you're, you're saying a million people. Yes. So think of like the largest stadium you can think of, like 100,000 people, and then you yeah. still have to multiply that right. by 10. And <laughs> and I was far. Anyway, so I'm, I'm, I'm walking, you know, I'm, I have the decision to get there, you know, I have the, the goal. And uh, so I'm uh, at a certain point, you know, I, I feel like I'm pushing people. You know, like otherwise, and and I mean, I'm not the only one doing it, yeah. but it just feels it feels uh, bad, yeah, yeah, like <laughs> it feels bad because you know the, here's a priest, you know, like pushing people, but it, it's the only way. Uh huh. So long story short, I finally, super exhausted, I get where all the priests are, and I'm like, there were ten thousand priests. <laughs> And so I'm like, how in the world I'm going to to see him? And everyone's wearing the same thing, right? <laughs> so I'm just I'm just walking and walking, and you know, like you kind of see. And then I have astigmatism, so I'm I'm nearsighted, uh-huh. and so I can see from from a distance pretty well. Uh-huh. And so I mean that that's even worse. Yeah. Know? So I'm just going, going, and then just just like that, uh. I see him and I see Father David Hust, another one of our priests uh-huh. in the archdiocese. And I just yell, you know, Meyer. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then he, he just looks at me and, and yeah. Then wow. We found each other. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. That's fantastic. Yeah. In, in a sea of 10,000 priests. I know. In a crowd of a million people. Yes. The two of you were able to see each other right. through just one text. Right. I'm on the left side. Right. <laughs> yeah, but you know it's interesting. I don't know if I was gonna be concelebrating the mass had not had I not known that he was gonna be there, Father really? Meyer. I was. I, I mean, it was almost impossible to get through that people. Uh huh. And so I, 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 at one point, I'm like, I don't think I'm gonna be able. I mean, mass yeah. was almost about to start. Uh huh. And I'm halfway, you know, how am I going to be able to do this? And so I was just, you know, uh, willing to just celebrate mass, you know, in another place. Mm -hmm. Um, But the fact is that because I knew that Father Christopher Meyer was there, that kind of gave me, you know, like the the challenge of I'm going to meet him. I can make it. (laughs) And so, boom, it happened. That's great. Were you able to get the, the, your groups of teens together or was that not possible because of the crowd? Um, yeah, no, because he, he went with, uh, hundreds uh-huh. of the archdiocese and I only, I came with, uh, 25 young adults. Okay. And so it was, uh, yeah, it was different. And then also we, we hired a company, it's called JMJ Youth. Uh-huh. So they, we also had, a uh, our own, um, leader, you uh-huh. know, from them and yeah, just. With their itinerary work. and everything mm-hmm. and, the, and transportation and all of As that. As a matter yeah. of fact, I, I knew later, like days later, that there was a reunion with Bishop Italo. Mm. I would have loved to be there. Yeah. And uh, we I didn't even know. Uh, so I don't know uh, who was in charge of communicating that to all the groups because they knew that we were going there. Mm, must have been but a anyway, we battery, missed it. cell phone so. battery situation again, yeah. maybe, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't imagine. You said you slept on the street? Oh, yeah. Well, the- it's a vigil prior to the to the closing mass so there's adoration so it was just that one day yeah it's only okay not the entire (laughs) okay i was wondering (laughs) it it felt like it felt like more it felt like a week but it was uh yeah it was only one night yeah wow and a million people sleeping on the street yeah well i I mean the whole the 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 challenge began in the morning because people make their way to where it's going to be the mass, which uh-huh. is near the, the coast. And so we they closed the freeway. Imagine I-10 being closed oh, wow. for a million people, for almost two million actually uh-huh. for that mass. Uh, I mean, it was like the Exodus. Pro- wow. The Exodus probably uh, looked like that. Wow. Uh, but it was awesome. Like, you know, uh, some of our young adults, you know, they were... Um, uh, passing the the uh, the football, uh, you know, in the, in the freeway, uh, or, That's the, cool. or the uh, American football, you know. So, yeah. So it's um, it was fun. It was fun, you know. The, like like I said, humor and 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 make it fun. You know, it just brings everything uh, more bearable. You know? And I guess also, like you said, you can feed off of the energy and the excitement of the youth. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Oh yeah. This 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 
guys have so much energy. <laughs> it's insane. Oh, another story. So finally, you know, after like walking like five hours, you know, under the, the heat, the sun, obviously you get to the camping site and it's like, what is it? I mean, it's just a bunch of people just there on the on the floor, you know. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> not, I, I've never experienced this in my life. And uh, so long story short, you know, I'm super tired and I decided to try to take a nap. And uh, as I lay down, there was this young, I thought he was a young priest that literally is like next to me. Uh-huh. And uh, and so he saw me and, you know, it's like, again, that brotherhood in the priesthood. I'm like, oh. You got to mingle with I'm this gonna guy. I'm mingle with this guy. <laughs> and so, uh, and I said, hey, hi, I'm Father Rick. I'm from United States, Texas. And where are you from? And he's like, oh, well, I'm not a priest yet. I'm a transitional deacon. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm from Czech Republic. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, that's cool. I said, oh, you know, um, in two weeks, we're going to have uh, a mass in Czech at St. Bartholomew. Because, you know, this is a tradition that one of our parishioners, he has an association uh, of Czechs. Uh-huh. Uh, because there were a lot of Czechs here in this in this part of Texas. I don't know if you knew that. Mm. Uh, have you heard about the painted churches? Yes, okay, I've well, been to some those. Some of those, those painted are... churches are from immigrants from Czech Republic. So he has a, a program uh, every year. Uh, some transitional deacons from I don't know which diocese in Czech Republic uh-huh. they come here for for two weeks. Oh, uh, they go to Austin. They come here. You know, and, I'm sure they uh, visit those painted churches as well. Yes, they mm-hmm. go there. They go to NASA. They, you know, they do fun stuff. And um, so I told him that you know in two weeks we're going to have a mass in Czech. And I said, and as a matter of fact, it's with some transitional deacon seminarians that come. And he's like, I'm one of them. <laughs> What a Can you small imagine world. two million people <laughs> and this transitional deacon who's coming to St. Bart's in two weeks camps next to, <laughs> yeah. to, to me? So wow. that's impressive. And I gave him a, a flag of Texas and I said, I uh-huh. want that back. I said, it's not for you because his <laughs> English was, was broken. Uh-huh. And so um, I thought he was going to be able to understand, but no, when he came, because uh-huh. obviously, you know, we had the mass and he came and, uh, and I said, hey, where's my flag? What do you mean? Where is my... I gave you the Texas flag and I told you that it was not yours, that you were going to bring it. Oh. It's like, <laughs> he oh, didn't understand. no, I didn't understand. Uh. Like, oh, but I can mail it to you. I'm like, no, no, no. I said, you don't have to. I don't care about the flag. You can keep it. I said, <laughs> but. Uh, it it would have just been cool if he gave it yeah, back to you. That's yeah, all. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so, so that was, uh, that was pretty Pretty cool story. Wow. Yeah. Out of two million people, yeah. the guy that decides to to camp out right next to you is somebody that you're going to see later on yes. in Texas. Yes. That's fantastic. Yeah. And I told this story to our parishioners. And so when they saw him, you know, he's like, is that true? You know? And, uh, yeah. So he was, it was a great experience. So yeah, overall World Youth Day, uh, I like it. I, you know, there were many things that I learned later through Facebook and other media, uh, things that were not uh, done properly, mm-hmm. like taking care of the Eucharist. I think, you know, they use some bowls, like from Ikea. Oh. Uh, uh, Ciboriums. Uh-huh. Um, also, like during that vigil, uh, because everybody received communion at, at that mass, they had stations with pre-consecrated hosts, but they were keeping them in like, Big Tupperwares, like plastic. Oh, um, yeah. Um, and I mean, inside there were those IKEA bowls, and uh, so there were things that could have been done better. Yeah. So I mean, but uh, all this to say is, uh, I learn about that later uh-huh. through social media. But as I was there, that didn't distract me because I didn't see it, mm-hmm. and so you know, I, I I was immersed into what was going on, and and. Um, yeah, I, I, nothing distracted me, so to speak, and so mm-hmm. I, I had a definitely a great experience there at World Youth Day. I, you know, I I saw Bishop Italo uh, with uh, Bishop Robert Barron. Mm, wow, uh, there was there were two nights. Uh, there were well, there was one evening with Bishop Robert Barron, and then in the morning it was called the Rise Meetings, uh-huh. and uh, it was for the feast of Saint John Vianney, and so. Bishop Barron said, we want to do something different. I want all the priests together, and uh-huh. we're going to do a, a short Eucharistic procession. 
and we're going to have all the priests available for confession uh, mm. for, for all of the, you know, I don't know how many, I think there were like 50 or 60,000 people wow. in that meeting. And uh, so it was, it was, it was great. And, you know, Bishop Barron, he, he yeah. always uh, gives the, the best talks. I and mean, he, he talked <laughs> about prayer. He said something that I, now I, I kind of use and I share. Uh, he, he talked about how Christ is the center and we need, to, every time we pray, uh, it's for that purpose, you know, to find our center and root it in, in the Lord. Mm-hmm. It's like when you pray the rosary, right? It's like you begin here and where do you end? You end on the same place, mm-hmm. you know, because you're supposed to ground, it's supposed to ground you, you know, the, the, the more rosaries you pray, right? It's supposed yeah. to ground you there because you're not going anywhere. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's right there rooted in, in Christ, um, that is go- that is going to allow you to move forward. Um, so the spiritual life, it's it's different than, you know, like uh, all the examples we have in the world. Yes. Uh, we always try to look for the next thing, right? Yeah. Uh, the, the progress, right? Uh, there's, there's this uh, idolatry of progress, you know, mm-hmm. just for the sake of progress. Like, n- But in the spiritual life, you know, it's it's supposed to ground you more and more in Christ. And so I, every time I pray the rosary now, I, I think about think that. About it's like, I'm just going to go back to the same place, but I'm renewed because yeah. I'm more grounded and centered in, in the Lord. Yeah. Keeps you centered, keeps yeah. you focused on right. the, yeah, what's really and important. And Mary accompanies you and, yes. and she, she helps us to do that. So Now, speaking of, you know, uh, being grounded and, you know, moving forward and all those types of things, we're on your fourth year now as parochial vicar yes. here at St. Bart. The clock is ticking now on you moving to your, another assignment, I'm sure. Has <laughs> there any has there been any talk about, you know, where you might end up in your next assignment and how soon that might be? No, no. Uh like I said with all this immigration thing. Uh-huh. Um so I don't know how many how many more years, how many more months. I don't I don't know. And so I think that has to be taken care of before moving, but um, but no, uh, regardless, no that and that's never like that. It's always it's always a surprise. Uh, you know, I I have a a small group of of priests that that we go to uh, IHOP. I don't know if Father Christopher Meyer told you. Uh, once a week we uh-huh. go at six a.m. We we go grab coffee and some breakfast. And, uh, you know, we just share our stuff. So priests in the area. Yeah, yeah, of the archdiocese. Uh-huh. And, uh, and out of that group, only one of them has been uh, called a pastor. And it happened just like that, like in less than two weeks. You know, he wow. had to pack his things. And uh-huh. and so, yeah, it's always a surprise. I mean, there's And, yeah, there could be rumors, but most of the time they're not real. And so I uh, just have to face reality when when it happens. Has there, have you ever thought about where you might end up next, where they may assign you? Uh, not really. Um, I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, but at the end of the day, you know, uh, you know, this, I take this from my, my mother, uh, because I don't know if you know, with all these interviews that you've had with priests, that, uh, whenever there is an opening, uh, for example, a pastor is, uh, well, dies or is sick and he has to be moved or, you know, whatever ha- things happen, there is a, there is a parish without a pastor. Mm-hmm. And so a letter is sent to all the priests of the archdiocese mm. about that, that uh, parish. Uh-huh. And it gives you some stats, you know, how many families are registered, uh-huh. you know, how many baptisms, weddings they do a year, that kind of thing. And, uh, and if you are interested doesn't mean that you're going to get it. Uh-huh. But if you are interested, just send a letter to the bishop and say, I'm interested. Okay. And when I told this system, so to speak, uh, to my mother, she's like, don't you dare to send a letter ever. I'm like, why? That's how it's supposed to be. Otherwise, you know, then they're not going to, you know, choose you or consider you. Uh huh. She's like, no, you know, don't, don't do that. Just... Let the Holy Spirit deal the whole thing. Mm. If you are going to go whatever parish, you know, let let the Holy Spirit decide. Because she goes, you know, let's say like you wanted a certain parish and then you get it. 
and then like it's completely like nothing that that what you thought it was or uh-huh. there's a problem uh-huh. you know there could be a lot of problems um you're going to blame yourself for the entire <laughs> for your entire life you know so just let god uh say i need you here cuz god knows better yes, than you do god knows better and uh-huh. somehow somehow even though you don't you know send that letter if god wants you to go to that community and serve them it'll happen and so in a way that that gives me peace and i think i'm i'm going to follow that i don't know if i'll change my mind a few more years <laughs> you later you got to listen but, to your mom yeah <laughs> but i i think uh, i th- i think that that's that's what i that is a great way that's of what i desire that. now yeah. just let it be a surprise wherever the lord wants to take me uh-huh. you know that's what i want ultimately so we thank you so much for sitting down with us and telling these these awesome stories and uh, we thank you for everything that you've done you know for the community here at at St. Bart's and and for you know powering through all of the the things that have happened here yeah. during your stay as as parochial vicar well thank you well, Rudy for for having me back and uh, it's always a pleasure Thank you. We'll continue to pray for you and and whatever happens with, you know, your visa and your assignment. I'm sure, you know, God has a plan and yes. he knows better than we do Amen. what's best. Right. That's all right. That's good. Thank God. you so much.